another way of making sure you get help to do the things you want and to get out into the community is to have a circle of support. Here is Jenny and her circle of support. I started worrying about Jenny's future more when I was thinking about the transition phases she's going to be going through from finishing school at 16, moving on to college, and also leaving children's services, moving into adult services. Uh, Jenny gets quite a good package through children's services. We get overnight respite, community support, but that is all going to change. They have different it's funded differently and they have different services. I mean, Jenny's 14 now. When she was younger, you start that journey. Um, you know, you start wading your way through the bureaucracy of education and um, fighting to get assessments for social services to, you know, see if you're eligible for services and fighting hard all the time. And it's not easy and sometimes you feel like giving up. But if you do give up, then things gradually or very quickly start falling apart, really. It's not easy and, you know, you have to be quite a fighter sometimes to get, you know, to get the services that you, your child needs. And this is the phase I'm really worried about, which is why um, I started, you know, looking at person-centred planning and having a transition review for Jenny and getting the circle of support around her. Because when Jenny was younger, I mean, it was a battle getting a diagnosis and then getting her educational needs met and it was an 18 month battle to get that recognised and get the right provision for her um, and the other services it's it's just all been a very gradual process of getting the right support in place and I feel that for the last sort of I suppose five or six years since things have been in place I've, we've been in a bit of a bubble really which is I feel about to pop now because as Jenny's approaching transition from school you know into adult services and everything's going to change and unless people are working together looking at Jenny's best interest for the future it's not going to work and there's no guarantee that doing it this way is going to give Jenny the services she needs but it's a a much better there's a much better chance of it of things happening effectively for Jenny if people work together it's hard for me to say um, living with uh, with Jenny who has autism because I don't see Jenny as like that because I see Jenny as as my stepdaughter, um, as part of the family. Do you know what I mean? I couldn't tell you what it's like because it's just part of what um, I'm used to. What when Sue and I first met is what I've evolved into and learn. You know how to cope with Jenny's needs the best I can. Not always perfect, but it's always a part learning process. Ideally, it would be a smooth transition from respite services that Jenny gets now that benefit all of us because Jenny's always had quite bad sleep problems to move to finding a, a suitable service that meets all Jenny's individual needs in adult services and getting the same level of support. That would be fantastic. For also, really more importantly for Jenny is to make sure she's got the right provision throughout the day, which would initially be... Um, a six form, a uh, sixteen plus provision, um, specialist six form placement, or um, a, a college, but that's obviously not going to last forever. Um, and I don't want Jenny being in some sort of institutionalised setting. I want people to look at what she likes doing. I want her to be able to be involved in decision making about her life and to be doing activities that she wants to do. Um, you know, and not things. I, I don't just want Jenny to have to fit into existing services if they're not suitable for her I want her I want us to be able to have a cre creative package around Jenny that she'll be able to you know pick and choose how she leads, leads her life really and especially really importantly the sort of people she lives with in the future and the people who support her are really important they've got to have the right characteristics to support her or else she's not going to be able to do the things she likes doing if, if the people who are with her I'm going to enjoy those as well, or might not want to do them. Jenny's had a, recently had a transition review, which um, brought up the fact that we, we really need to be looking at a circle of support for Jenny, and for me as well really, to help me support Jenny in the future. And also really long term, one of the longest issues for me is that I'm not always going to be about to support Jenny. 
and I want to make sure that there are enough people in her life who are looking out for the sort of have the same interests and concerns that I have now for Jenny's future and know her well enough to help her make the right choices about what she wants when she's older. So that's the reason the circles being you know, coming together. On video. We asked for people to volunteer to be involved in Jenny's circle. So obviously there's some family members and there's some friends and there are a couple of people who have worked with Jenny along the years who who have now become family friends um, and, and really care about Jenny and, and, and want the best for her future and want to be able to support me and our family to, to do that. <laughs> <laughs> From my point of view, it's it's really to support Jenny for throughout her future by having the people who who have interest in Jenny's life, you know, like everyone who's sat in this room, really, and and to make sure that that the the support and services she has in the future meet her needs and. And to also look at other opportunities and to look at her financial aspects of her future and everything that is going to need to happen. And, and also one thing that really concerns me as Jenny's mum is that if for any reason I'm not able to look after Jenny or I'm not here to do that, that this circle will provide a forum to support Jenny the way I'd like to see her supportive. Trying to get people to do the best for Jenny, whatever, whatever that be, you know. And obviously lots of people involved in her life will um, have different opinions about it. Mm -hmm. So it's just getting the, uh, the right thing for her. Really. I guess my hope for, for Jenny and Jenny's circle is, is if, if it was appropriate or you wanted us to, to have responsibility for financial aspects together or just thinking together with Jenny about her future, that it, it could become whatever made mm -hmm. sense to, to Jenny and the family. You know, across a, a continuum of, of possibilities, really. Mm. What about you? Um, well, I've not I've not been part of a support circle before, and I felt really honoured when you were asking people to be involved in it. <coughs> um, I guess for me, it's if if I can help in any way, um, negotiating around services, around contacts, mm -hmm. different people outside of services would give me even greater pleasure. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. Taking sort of Jenny on on a journey that's going to work for her and whatever that takes. Um, anything I can do in, in support. Um, I guess because we've got friends, mm -hmm. um, um, for me it's, it's, uh, it's, it's special. And I think for me, the fact that you've been as honest as you have, mm -hmm. Susie, about how you feel and your fears and your hopes for, for, mm -hmm. for Jen's future, whatever I can do in order to help her would be a privilege. So mm -hmm. that's what it's about for me. Yeah, I think for me it's um, it's obviously about ensuring a quality of life for Jenny, you know, on Jenny's terms, um, Jenny being as happy as possible, but I know from my experience as being a parent of disabled children that it's very hard to, unfortunately it's very hard to ensure a quality of life for our children and takes an immense strain on all, all the family, um, I think particularly, you know, Susie takes the role, the lead in that and that's a pressure, so I want to... I want to advocate for Jenny, but I want to support Susie in, in doing that because I know it's a heavy burden to carry. And, um, and I think that there are exciting opportunities that, you know, together we could take advantage of. Yeah. I guess we can have some, some food as, as part yeah, of that. I'll, I'll, I'll. We're going to be creative and ambitious in the right place. We're definitely going to have these before each review so that it's not the tail wagging the dog, but we can go in and say, now this is how we can best use this review to get um, the right stuff for Jenny. We're going to have fun, have food, be honest and open. Different opinions are fine because what we want is, is the best for Jenny and what you've gathered us here for is, is our diversity of views as well. But we're going to make sure it really works for Jenny in terms of, well, Jenny, you're walking the walk on this already because you've got your colouring pens out over there and Jenny's going to opt in and out as, as she wants to. We're going to meet here on, on the right Tuesdays um, at 4 o'clock planned in advance. That sounds good. I've talked about circles with a few people in the group for a while and I know it was an action that came out of Jenny's second review and it's only just something that's happened because I, I, I felt that it's been another thing that I've had to get moving on really so that in, in a sense is a relief for me that it's happening but it's nice that everyone's sharing the load um, that's nice that's come out of that and um, I'm glad that Jenny's been happy to be here and I'm glad that everyone's come. Thank you.